Welcome biologists to this video where we're going to have a look at the role of plant hormones. Uh, here is a table with all of the hormones that you need to be aware of and their main impacts upon the plant. And we're going to go through each one individually. So the first one is cytokinins and this one is involved with promoting cell division, basically mitosis in the roots and the shoots and that pretty much summarizes that one. The next one we need to be aware of is gibberellins. Gibberellins cause stem elongation but also seed germination. And this is how it works in terms of seed germination. So first of all, uh, the seed is going to be absorbing the water and this causes gibberellins to be made within the embryo. Now the embryo is just a part of the seed. The next thing that happens is that amylase and proteases are going to be made in the food store. And this is because gibberellin acts as a trans transcription factor, turning on the section of DNA that codes for these two enzymes, amylase and protease. Amylase will then break down starch into glucose, which can then be used in aerobic respiration. And proteases will break down protein stores within the seeds to create amino acids, which will be used for the growth of the seeds to create the shoots and the roots. So that's seed germination. The next one is abscetic acid, also known as ABA, and this is involved with stomatal opening and closure. So the way that this works is the fact that water becomes limiting, the root cells will produce and make ABA. This will then travel up to the leaves of the plant and it will bind to specific and complementary receptors on the cell surface membrane of the guard cells. Once it's bound to those receptors on the guard cells, it's going to cause the ionic concentration inside of those guard cells to decrease so that ions will be moved outside of those cells. This will cause the water potential inside of the guard cells to increase and therefore water will move out of the guard cells by osmosis. Now you might need to recap and have a look at what causes the stomata to open and close in terms of what's happening to the guard cells to understand this a little bit more. But that in summary is what happens and how ABA causes this to happen. The next hormone we need to be aware of is IAA also known as auxin and in an exam you do need to be aware that they could use IAA instead of auxin. This is the most commonly asked about hormone and it's mainly used in, to cause stem elongation. It also prevents um, and inhibits ethene and therefore will prevent fruit fall. It also causes apical dominance and it can inhibit root growth at high concentrations. Auxin will also cause positive geotropism and positive phototropism. Um, so to summarise, basically that positive phototropism is where we cause the root shoots to bend towards the light and we've got that positive geotropism which is where the roots grow towards that gravitational pull. Apical dominance is where the shoot will carry on going upwards and I won't get any lateral growth. So lateral growth is these bits here on the plant where I get side shoots. Apical dominance will cause the plant to go upwards and upwards and upwards and have very little lateral growth. That's apical dominance. Next thing we need to understand is that auxin inhibits ethene. Ethene causes fruit to ripen and leaf fall, so auxins will inhibit that from happening. And this is how auxins cause that positive phototropism. So this bit here is directly from the mark scheme and we need to know this. So first thing to understand is that auxins are made at the, at the tip of the shoot and they diffuse down the shoot tip. Um, now what happens is I've got light here is coming from one direction and what happens is that the light will break down the auxin on the, the, the side of the shoot that is closest to the light. So therefore, I will have a higher concentration of auxin on the shaded side of the shoot. Therefore, this causes, auxin causes a more mitosis to occur on the shaded side of the shoot, therefore causing that shoot to bend towards the light, causing positive phototropism. In the roots, I get positive geotropism, and in this part, IAA or um, auxin will gather on the side of the root that has the strongest pull of gravity. Now, in the roots, it has the opposite effect, and it will inhibit mitosis or stop mitosis on the side of the root that has the strongest pull of gravity. Therefore, the side that has the weaker side of gravity will grow or have more mitosis causing the root to bend and grow downwards towards the pull of gravity. The next and last hormone that I need to be aware of is ethene. Ethene promotes fruit ripening and also leaf fall. 
which is also some of the uses in terms of the next spec point looking at uses of commercial uses of these hormones. Now in terms of abscission and leaf loss, as we mentioned before, auxin inhibits ethene. So when I have the long days in the summer, I have a lot of auxin. Therefore, in the shorter days, when the day length shortens, I get less auxin. And when I get less auxin, it means I get more ethene produced, which is why I get leaf loss in the in the months of the year where I have the shorter days. And deciduous plants will lose leaves as because it costs more energy and glucose to keep them in the winter months than it does to lose them and regrow them in the spring. So because of the increase in darkness in those longer days, it results in less auxin being made by the plant. Therefore, it allows ethene to be produced and it stimulates enzymes in this part here in the abscission zone to be made or synthesized and what they'll do is that they, they will digest and weaken this part of the leaf now the rest of the leaf will be here it's just cut off for this image but in this this is where it would digest the part of the leaf what would happen then is the leaf would fall off and i would get fatty deposits but also callose deposited in this area to prevent any pathogens from causing disease that's pretty much everything you need to know about plant hormones all of the ones on there and you need to know how they are used in experiments which is in the next video guys good luck with your exams and all the best with your studies